Hey folks and welcome to this video. Um, I'm using a new microphone today. I'm using my son's uh, microphone. It looks pretty fancy. It looks like a real one. So I'm hoping that the sound quality is a little bit better uh, for this recording. So let me know if the sound is good. Um, okay, so today we're just going to look at um, the buy and sell zone algo trader. Um, okay, I mean, the buy and sell zone algo trader is a tool that I developed quite a long time ago uh, to automate the identification of profitable parameters for the supply and demand software. And it was just a tool that I used to help me find the most profitable combination of parameters. Um, I never really intended on on offering it as a, as a product, but it kind of evolved into that over the course of the past uh, several years. Um, and it's good, it's, it's a really good tool. Um, but one thing that it is not, is it's not a 100% fully automated trading robot. It requires discretion. Um, and I know that there are several of you who are using it and you're doing so very well, which pleases me enormously. And there are also others that are using it that aren't doing so well. And so I just want to try and differentiate between uh, the two types of people because I think that um, that something rather there are some very key differences between those who are earning money and those who are losing money. Okay, so I just want to go through that today. Okay, and so I mean essentially what we are doing is that we are waiting for the software to find an area of supply or demand for us. Okay, and it does that by by essentially highlighting a box like this one that we can see here. And if you look at this here, I mean, this is really far away from price. It's quite far away from price. It's, it's all the way down here. But the reason I like this area here is because price left and then price managed to go all the way up here from here. This is the move. A slingshot was pulled back to here and it came all the way up here. And so why? While price might not get there for another week, it's a good it's a good position and it's one worth waiting for. And I know a lot of people, perhaps those who are not earning money, will see that and they would think, oh, it's too far away. And then what they'll start doing is they'll start doing this. They're going click down so the one hour, oh, there's no action. The 30 minute, oh, there's not enough action. 15 minute and there's no action. And this is kind of the danger of that. And while you can, you can see that Yes, almost every single one of these works. I mean, this one here, price touched it, bounced. This one here, here touched, turned around. This one here, bounced. This one here, bounced, bounced. This one bounced. I mean, they all work, it seems. This one here, bounced. But we're not, we're not necessarily going to be there to take, to close these positions once they go into profit. This one here worked beautifully. This one here worked beautifully. This one here worked beautifully. I mean, they almost all seem to work. But the problem is, is that the stop is likely going to be maybe a little bit wider um, and the target is likely going to be quite a bit wider, maybe more than the size of the stop. Okay, And so, and so typically the, uh, the target will be uh, unattainable because it's too far away from price. And while this is intraday volatility, if you're in front of the, the computer and you're watching this, then I think everything's good. You can just you can be there to get out of these positions. If you're not fo uh, focusing on too many pairs, you can do that. Okay, and so now we're on this one here and price is in that area there. Um, and so we'll probably have a reaction. Okay, will we for sure? No, nothing is for certain, but we, we very likely will. Okay, and so what I want, want you to understand is the people who are doing well using uh, the buy and sell zones robot are, are paying attention rather they're not paying attention to this. They are mindful of this fact that uh, sometimes they have to be there, especially if you're on the smaller time frames, to reduce the risk or to get out of the trades. Okay, and so there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of uh, chaos and noise and and volatility on these smaller time frames. But the beauty of going up to the four hour, the daily, and the weekly is that is that you get levels like this. You know, and this is really far away from price. And while this is this is a very, very tiny stop, I mean, you could say, well, I'll be more comfortable with three times the size of that. So I go here and I'll change that. And so I'll say, OK, well, I don't want one and a half times the size. I want maybe 
three times the size and we have like a decent size stop so that will grow two times the size maybe around here and if I'm happy with that then I'll say great then I'll put on that trade like that okay so the entry is here here's the stop and the target is two times the size of the stop okay then I'm turning it off then I'm going to the next one so I have a two chart configuration I'm also often paying attention to to this okay and so you can see on the monthly chart we're in an uptrend weekly we're in a downtrend daily downtrend four hour downtrend what does that what does that mean well that means that we're on a downtrend on the on the monthly I said okay that's a really big time frame let's start with the weekly we're on uptrend on the weekly so prices is, is going higher okay so we have swings moving higher like this but on the daily in the four hour so on the on the daily we're going down we're already we've already established the downtrend but on the four hour we're going up which means that we're probably um, we are now starting to turn up which is essentially the continuation of the weekly trend okay so the information that you're seeing here is really important um, and another thing that's really important to pay attention to is this bit here which is the information about the zones okay so let's find something else <clears throat> that maybe has a different uh, different reading Okay, so here on the weekly chart, it says we're in the buy zone. What does that mean? Well, if we go to the weekly chart, you can see that we're really, really low. So that means we are, we have approached. Let me do it here so we can see. Okay, so you'll notice the histogram on the weekly chart is going to be really, really low. So we're going to be below. What color is that line? The green, the red lines. Okay, so we're just here. We're just about below this red line so that means that okay we're probably going to start to begin to move higher and how do i know that well i don't i don't know that this is going to happen the last time we started to get these dots we were here we were here and now last time we got these dots we were here and we're here there's a pretty high likelihood that we have reached the end of this bearish cycle and now it's time to do this because no, notice that we do this bullish cycle bearish cycle some are longer than others bullish cycle bearish bullish bearish okay it's not just it's not just up and down or straight we go through these these periods of, of contraction and ex, uh, expansion where we have uh, expansion as in the value of of the assets so now we're in expansion phase um compression contraction expansion contraction okay so expansion means higher prices contraction means lower prices expansion compression contraction okay and so knowing where you are relative to these uh, these cycles is super interesting and this is the whole reason i made the asset strength histograms to, is to show you visually where you were relative to these cycles that is super important and so now we know that we are in the buy zone on a weekly chart i mean how would how would that affect how you would trade well it would make me really careful about selling now because i'd be selling at very cheap prices so what i'll do is i'm going to go to the four hour chart and i'm going to take this information with me so we have a short position here <clears throat> and it means you've got to be really careful about about selling there or selling now because we are really low okay so even though it looks like a great trade on the four hour chart um, we would be selling at very cheap prices relative to the major cycles but what we can see here is that we have this period of of value where people were really happy buying and selling to each other and the reason I think we're going to go on a little bit more is because we poked out higher from this this area of distribution so I think we're going to go here and we're going to move lower but we're, we're it's not certain that we're going to continue to move lower but what I do like is that we had this okay price came down we formed this pattern here now we're probably going to wriggle down um, maybe to something down here the details of which we can't see but if we looked here this is at the big figure this is at the 
pretty much the origin of this move that moved above. It's at the buy zone, which is the bottom of, of this price structure here. Okay, so this is a cheaper price. This is, sorry, this is an expensive price. This is a cheaper price. So anywhere in this black space, let me see if I can, anywhere in this black space here, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good price. That's a discount price relative to where prices have been since middle July. Okay, and so if price comes down here, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty keen to be buying also because we know on the weekly chart that we're very, very negative, which means that we are likely going to start to wriggle higher. I could be wrong and, and the software could be wrong and it could just mean that we are, we are this, we're, we're looking, we're seeking liquidity to drive prices lower. We did this to attract people to buy. So now the people who, who, who got long here on the breakout of this, they're holding on to positions that are negative. So when they start to sell, <clears throat> this is gonna this is gonna add to the momentum of the downward for, uh, of of the move for lower. Okay, so this is when I see this, I think hmm, maybe going low. What I would like to see now is I would like to see price come down and then move back in, and then that would be, give me enormous confidence to buy. Number one, we did liquidity exploration very low below this this uh, this perceived. Um, the price window of value. Value as in people are happy to buy and sell. Discount price, premium price, we went below it. And we're doing this at a very, very low uh, price point or rather uh, value point for, for this chart. And so, I mean, I'll be looking essentially now for, for buy signals and I'll be looking quite low. And so if I zoom out a little bit, I wanna look for those. So if we go like this and we scroll over, yeah, I mean we have we have those. This is pretty messy, um, but we've got we've got this. And this is looks interesting where we have this, which was tested several times, and now it's gone. The origin of the move that removed that is here. So there's something in here that's interesting. So this would be a really interesting place to begin to buy. Maybe around the the one point uh, zero zero four, whatever that is. That would be an interesting point, I think, to begin to, to get into a position or around the big figure, as you can see down here, which is essentially where we pulled the slingshot back that enabled price to trade above these highs here. Okay, So very interesting. What you could also do is you could say, okay, well, I actually want to buy here and I want to take the really low slingshot, which is at the big figure, which is great. I mean, this would be a really nice place. And I think, as we spoke about earlier, should price decide to to revisit these lower prices it would be doing so um, at a time where we're looking for a bullish uh, the beginning of a of a bullish cycle the end of a bearish cycle so that would be a really attractive price um, for those for those reasons okay well i'm gonna leave this video slightly short it's only 13 14 minutes i, I hope that this this helps you understand um, that you can make this work, but you just have to pay attention to, to a few things. You have to know where you are relative to the major cycles, so the daily, the weekly chart. Um, you you want to be trading at the extremes. So on this time on this time frame, you want to be you want to be trading selling at, uh, like above these these areas or below them buying because this is this is at the more attractive prices for both buying and selling. Okay, and you want to be okay having to wait for a position to fill because when they do fill, it's normally at such an extreme discount in price or a premium price of your selling that it's worth the wait. Okay, and so I recommend that you, that you do this. And so, yeah, I'll leave you with that. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And thank you once again for watching.